Hi guys! I've got a great new project for you for this midweek. Something to keep you occupied before the weekend. I have another live class on Facebook on Saturday at 1 p.m. Atlantic Standard Time. That's noon Eastern Standard Time. So don't forget to join me on Tracy Morrow Live. For that, we're doing a Tuscan theme. You're gonna love it. I know I do. What else? Oh yeah, we have another giveaway. I do like my giveaway. So uh, this week we have a gorgeous set of Dynasty Stencil Pro stencil brushes for one of you that leaves your state, your province, your country, or wherever it is that you're viewing from. Leave that in the comments, hit the subscribe button, and we will randomly select a winner, and we'll let you know about that next week. So, I think it's time for us to get started. So today we're going to tackle this project. It's not a difficult one. It just looks difficult, but it really isn't. Everybody loves uh, decor items for the holidays and this is a really simple one it's easy to do doesn't have a lot of steps and it doesn't use a lot of colors so it's really this simple so I started out with uh, this is a 10 by 10 panel it's already grooved to make it look like those palette boards these are really nice this one I got from Viking Woodcrafts they're based in uh, Minnesota awesome company to deal with and they have a fantastic selection on their website so if you get a chance check out www.vikingwoodcrafts.com this uh, little panel has got one coat of Decwart Americana this is country red just one coat we don't want a fully opaque thing you're just gonna have a hard time getting it off where do we want to get it off so first step get that one coat on it should kind of look a little Imperfect, not full coverage, a little darker in spots, a little thinner in others. I like to use lots of water when I put it on so it goes on more like a deep dark stain than it does a paint. And then you're gonna give it a chance to dry really well, probably 15, 20 minutes, and then you're going to take a sanding sponge and you're going to sand that sucker back. You don't have to work too hard to do this. What it's going to do is take off any of those rough spots and that furring, but then you're going to spend a little bit of time wearing the paint off of these edges. Not a ton of it, but enough that you can see the existing, the original wood surface through it. So when we do a little bit of staining afterwards, all of these light areas are going to get a little bit darker and it's really going to look great. Going to have that vintage feel to it. So this one is ready to go. Now I've already done a couple of the steps ahead. I traced and transferred this wreath pattern onto my surface. And I'm painting in all of these leaves with just with some warm white and that number two rigger. So you don't need a lot of brushes for this project either. Now when I'm painting my leaves, I always start from the bottom of the leaf and work out to the point. And you can generally do this in three passes. That simple. So the paint can be quite thin. It doesn't have to be thick. And this does not have to be fully opaque. So if it looks a little sketchy, that's okay. So you want to get all of those leaves painted, just like so. Any place where they overlap, make sure you leave a little space. Good to go. So it's not that difficult. It's just a simple base coat of warm white for all of those leaves. I'll just take a second and fill in the rest of these real quick. Neatness doesn't count. Perfection is to be avoided at all costs. This is going to have a vintage feel anyway, and it's going to be a little distressed looking anyway, so you don't need to get them utterly perfect but we do need to get some color in there. Easy peasy. That warm white is nicely opaque anyway, so you get generally pretty good coverage from one coat. Just like that. And using that, you know, three strokes to fill in that space is plenty almost done. This project shouldn't take much more than about an hour start to finish. It's not 
a really involved piece. It has some fun techniques in it. And it looks really great when it's done. So there we go. We've got our leaves all painted. Now, this piece also has some berries in here. Now, I've used uh, a new color from Decorte. This is Decorte's Warm Sunset. It's sort of a reddish orange. It's a very nice, warm, autumnal color. And I'm using one of Decorte's little sponge daubers. This is the one third inch sponge dauber. And I pick up a little bit of that Warm Sunset. And then on one side of the dauber, I pick up a little bit of burgundy. Now I'm not twisting this, I'm just tapping it in place, like so. And then I go over to my dot and just press down. Give it a firm press. So that the color fills in. Didn't quite have enough paint on my dauber. There we go. So just press until it fills that circle, like so. And that will automatically shade your berries. And continue around the piece until you have all the berries filled in. Don't worry if that white line from the graphite is showing, that's okay, the eraser will take care of it. Just like that. A little burgundy wine. Just tap them up and down until they get a nice blend. And then just press the dauber in place. and it gives you a nice berry with already shaded. Then the only thing you have left to do is to add a little highlight to that berry, which we're going to do in just a second. Berries are done. So we're going to come back to our rigger and that warm white and we're going to add just a little dot of white to those berries. Now the, on that orange side is where we want that dot. Because that's where the lighter color is. A little highlight, so fast and easy. And it looks great. So we have berries done. So you're going to give this a few minutes to dry and then you're going to give it a very light sanding. Now the light sanding is just to wear through a little bit of this white. So here's my piece. I haven't highlighted my berries but I'm going to very quickly. Just fast a little bit. Now each of your berries gets a highlight. If you end up sanding them off, that's okay. Don't worry about it. You're going to come back to it anyhow. So the distressing is very simple. Just a light, all in one direction, sand just to smooth out any little rough spots and to soften the edges of those leaves. Easy peasy. And again, I said, if you sand through those berries, don't worry about it, you can put the highlights back on. So once you've done that, you're ready to trace and transfer your lettering. Now I have mine on, but I'm going to take a couple of seconds to show you how to do this. So I have the word blessed on here. I have the word gather, but I have the word blessed. So you would center this on the wreath and then tape your line drawing in place. Make sure that it's nice and straight. And there's a couple of ways you can do that. You can take a ruler 
and apply a nice straight line underneath this lettering. And then do the same thing to your surface. Add a nice straight line at the height that you want the lettering. Nice and straight. And then position your line drawing so that those two lines meet up. Now to trace your line drawing, make sure that you have a good straight edge ruler on all your vertical and horizontal lines. And trace them this way. If you have irregular and crooked lines on these vertical or horizontal lines, you're going to end up with very crooked and irregular lettering. So the more crisp and clean your transfer is, the better. So make sure on all those vertical and horizontal lines that you use a good straight edge ruler to ensure that those vertical and horizontal lines are nice and straight. So I have the word gather in here, but I need to knock this background back a little bit in order for the lettering that we put on to jump forward. So I'm using my favorite fugly brush. This is a one inch Dynasty oval encaustic brush and a little bit of thinned asphaltum. And I take that asphaltum over the red like so. I always follow the grain of the wood. As you can see, I can still see my lettering right through that wash of asphaltum. It's not super strong, but it is enough to drastically change the look of this wood. Now remember what I said about those sanded edges? where they were sanded through to the raw wood, that asphaltum is going to catch there very nicely. Now it does two things. It subdues all of these other colors. That white becomes a little less intense and a little softer. That little bit of sanding adds a little bit of vintage age to the lettering. And that asphaltum just warms this up really nicely. There, I think we're good to go. So I'm going to make a little bit of noise here for just a second. Okay, so now it's nice and dry. Now we have to look at that lettering. So this has been toned down, that red has been subdued, the white on the lettering has been, sub or the leaves has been subdued. I'm going to take a little warm white on my number two rigger. This is for the lettering. So make sure that your paint is fairly thin, I, a little thicker than milk. Then pat your brush till you get a nice chisel edge and press down, open it up, and come back up onto the chisel edge. And that chisel edge is what you'll be able to do all those fine lines with. So here's our R. I'm going to chisel edge, press down, open the brush up to fill the space and then back up onto the chisel edge. And I just goofed on this letter. I missed the line. So I have a little bit of room to fix it. There we go. Didn't quite open the brush up enough. Then I 
pat that brush flat so I get a chisel edge so I can do those fine lines. And I'm going to do the same there. It's lettering as simple as that. Make sure your paint is reasonably thin. Pat the brush till you get a straight edge. Press down to open the brush up and come back up onto the chisel edge. You don't have to fill it all in one pass, but it is easier. But if the lettering is wider, then by all means take a couple of passes to do it. And take your time and relax doing this. It's not, we always worry about doing lettering like it's something foreign to us. And if you make little mistakes, that's okay too. As long as your lettering is nice and straight, all those little flaws will not matter. So I press down to open up that brush and come back up onto the chisel edge. So I'll just continue on until I'm finished with my lettering. And once it's done, then I have to look at aging that edge a little bit. So all of the attention goes on the center portion here. So in order to do that, I need an angled shader and I'm going to tip load it as if I'm going to float. And blend it well so that I get a nice gradient of color. And then I'm going to come along to the top edges of each one of these and put a fairly rough float. I'm not looking for perfection. It's just getting a darker edge up here. And again, neatness doesn't really count. It doesn't matter if one side of that float is stronger than the other. We're just aging the edge of these boards. And then get around that corner, get that color nice and dark on the corners. And float down the side. And wherever that area you sanded off, it's going to get a little darker. makes a difference already when you see how that age to those corners and edges draws the eye to the center of the piece. And you can make it as dark as you want if you find the asphaltum is not getting it as dark as you would like. Try adding a little bit of lamp black to the asphaltum. It'll give you a little more depth if you like it darker. So I'm going to pull a little bit of lamp black in here. Just a little. We can get out of the bottle. So here's my puddle of asphaltum. I'm going to pick up just a touch of lamp black and mix it with the asphaltum. It keeps it from being too harsh and too cold. And I'm going to use that to deepen those corners. Wherever you want that color to jump a little bit more, don't be shy. It ages things very nicely without getting too cold. We'll just get this one last corner, throw a little bit in here, and we'll finish off that lettering and the shading and the last couple of steps on this piece. There. That little bit of 
darkening at the edges will force the eye in towards the center of your piece, putting all of the attention where it's supposed to be. So you notice I've got a letter that runs right down this vertical line in the middle of it, in the middle of the surface. So I'm going to show you a real quick trick. So you can take your rigger and go into that line just a little so that it meets, forces those letters to connect. Now the nice part is if your lettering is not spot on perfect, that's okay. You can always take a little bit of sandpaper and distress it so that it matches the rest of the background. Or you can just let it be as it is. If it's looking for a vintage, of, uh, a vintage feel on this kind of thing, don't worry too much about the perfection of everything. Straight and level, yes. Fully opaque, a little irregular is okay. It's not the end of the world. So, almost done. Again, I like to make sure that rigor gets lots of work out. Whoops. Too much paint. Push down to open that brush up. and then come back up on the chisel edge. Just one more here. I'm trying to avoid putting my fingers in wet paint. I keep running out of water on this brush. There we go. These big loops can be intimidating. There's an old trick for painting with a fine brush that don't look where the brush point is, look where you want it to go like driving a car and so if you're looking over your left shoulder all the time the car wants to go that way. Now if you whoopsie like I just did there is a handy little trick to that. I like to take one of my other angle brushes a clean one. I whoopsied in two places. I put my finger in wet paint so I have to take that off but then I messed up this line right here. So I'm going to use another brush to scrub that line out, just like that. And then you can wipe it away. So I've gotten rid of my little goof. So I will pick up my rigger and be, while, once that surface is dry, if I try to do it while it's wet, it'll just run. There we go, much better. And I'll fix, laid my finger right in the wet paint here. In a couple of places. Not the end of the world, it's paint. Now, I've got one more spot to do. I have the top of this L to finish, and then we have this big swooping swirl. There we go. Oops. Press down to open the brush up, and it helps if you have paint in it.
come back here and fix my goof. cooking with gas. So now that the lettering is in place we have to add a little shadow to that background and I'm coming back with that little bit of asphaltum and we're going to put a shadow just on the right hand side on the background. It doesn't have to be perfect and it's just a subtle float and all this does is it lifts that lettering off the surface a little bit. quickly finish out this lettering. Now if you are not confident in your ability to float like this, there is a, an alternative and it's quite simple and I'll show you that in just a sec. Okay. And the alternative is one of these. This is my Uniball Signo, the 0.38. So if you're not great at floating and you still want to have a little bit of a shadow in there, grab one of those ink pens, a gel pen, your favorite pen, and just put a fine black line on the right side of each of those letters. Doesn't have to be perfect, but that even just that simple little line in those places will help lift that lettering off of the background. One way to do this is not the only way to do this, so don't be shy. If you have a good liner brush, you want to try it with a thin line of black paint, by all means, but you can do it with one of these Uniball Signos. They're fantastic. We have these on the website. Okay, so we've got our shadow in. We've got a couple of little lines in. Um, I want to go back in and sort of touch up my berries a little bit. And I think mine are a little too wonky. So just going to pop them a little bit. Because they were done ahead of time, it's, I can just, <coughs> You know, you have days. Pop a little extra color onto my berries. There we go. Now remember that highlight on those berries? I've mussed these up a couple of times already today, so third time's the charm. Highlight there. Now we have one last step. I'm going to grab my big script liner. And you can take a little bit of warm white, a little thinned warm white, and add a, just a few little branches and tendrils in here. Just to join these leaves together. Like so. And then the last step is to spatter it. And I like to start with a little bit of warm white and just lightly spatter the surface. And then I'm going to repeat that with a little bit of lamp black. Ashfaltum will work too. A little bit of lamp black. It's fine, it's light, it's not a ton. And then you just set that aside to dry. And there you have it, a fun, easy to do little holiday sign for Thanksgiving, Christmas, or what have you.
Well, that's it. That's as simple as that gets. It's an easy and it's really fun to do and I hope that you enjoy it. The surfaces are easy to get. You don't need a lot of colors and you don't need a lot of special tools to do this. So don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Join me on Saturday on Tracy Moreau Live for another live class on Facebook. And don't forget to put your place that you are watching from in the comment section. I'd really like to see where everybody is coming from and we will draw randomly and one of you will get a great set of Dynasty Stencil Pro stencil brushes. Thanks for joining me. Love you. Stay safe.